Hey, how's it going today, everybody? This is Dustin coming in, and uh, today we're going to start working on our first episode for the C++ text RPG series that I'm working on. So, what's going to be on the agenda for today? The agenda today is we're going to create a new project and try to set up the game loop. So, some requirements for uh, this fun little course of ours. Uh, is it a course? Well, we'll just say series. Will be Visual Studio 2022. Uh, I personally enjoy using Visual Studio and use it for work daily. You could probably use another IDE such as Code Blocks or Eclipse if you prefer. However, the lessons will be done in Visual Studio. There will be some system calls and other things done specifically for Windows. So you will most likely want to be able to do this with Windows. Um, however, if you want to use another OS, you're going to have to look up how to do those similar functions with that OS. Besides from system calls, the rest of the code should work for any system, so we're going to try our best there. And some general knowledge of C++ programming, and just or programming in general, will extremely help. Again, I'm not an expert, so we're all going to be learning along the way. And if you have any tips that maybe I'm doing something wrong, hey, just leave it in the comments, and I'll see if I can make that work as well. C++ is the way to go, for us anyway. <laughs> So right now, first thing we're going to do is create a project. So let's open up Visual Studio and get that done. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create an empty project, empty C++ project. So let's do that right now. And we're going to call that text RPG. You can call it whatever you want. And then I'm just going to call it a CPP as well. Okay. And then create that project. What next thing do we have to do? We are going to start our game loop. So... When we're setting up the game loop, let's ask us ourselves a few questions. Why make? Why are we making a game loop? A game loop is a nice and clean way to process the user's inputs, update game objects, and draw or render graphics, text in our case, to the scene. We'll basically use a while loop and continue looping until we receive an exit command. So if you look here, it will be doing handling the inputs, updating and draw and ours it will be writing to the console so let's get into that so first thing we want to do let's adjust this so it's here and we're going to want to add a few things so let's add a folder we'll add a source folder and from there and there we're going to add a couple other folders utilities all our utility functions and and files would go into here and then let's start with main main it's going to be a simple file for now so what we're going to want to do is create a game class or application class and we want to keep our main nice and clean we don't want to put too much in here so let's go back here and start our game class so new header all right, that's game.h. From here, we'll go. Oh, I'm all over the place today. Yeah, so I like to put my private variables at the top when it comes to when I create my classes. Some people like to put them at the bottom. I like to put them at the top. You can put them wherever you like, though. So let's just create our constructor and our destructor. Okay. And we're also going to want to have the run function. So I actually like to put the other functions for the application as private functions. So we're going to have a bool in it. That's to initialize any variables and stuff. Pointers, whatever we have. And then void process inputs and void update and also void draw. So that's basically our loop that we shown in the presentation there. So we're actually going to initialize everything first. 
and then we'll get into this loop. So what we're going to need now is, sorry, is a bool. Now I'm going to be using a slight version of Hungarian notation. You don't have to do this. So we'll just start with that. Real simple, right? First things first. If you hit control period, you should be able to do this and it will create the function for you and create by create a new CPP file. So I'll show you with another one. So if you go over top of the destructor here, hit control period, it'll ask you to create definition in game.cpp. Yes, that's what we want to do. So that's in. Awesome. And we'll just do that to all of them. There might be better ways to do this or faster ways. If you know, let me know in the comments. All right. Get these made. In it. Awesome. Cool. Let's go back to here. So if you hit F12, it'll take you directly there. So we're going to want to initialize that. Okay, so that is initialized. But we're not going to want to call in it inside the constructor. We're actually going to want to call in it before the run. And we're going to do it like this. So if MB is running, and we actually don't want to start this off as false. That was just something that my brain did automatically, but I actually want to start this off as true. We want it to be running at the beginning. Okay. So now we also want to go if not in it and B is running equals false. <laughs> I'm making all kinds of mistakes today. Yeah, so most of these are unscripted. I'm going to try my best to program it, not necessarily from scratch, but on the fly and see how it goes. If you guys don't like that, you want something more structured, let me know. So we could probably just do this here. Okay, so if it runs the init function, it's going to set this to false. It's never going to go in here. It's going to exit the program. We're probably going to have a cleanup function as well. That'll clean up anything that if we do do allocations. Process inputs, what was the other one? Update and draw. Awesome. There you go, that's basically a game loop that we have right now. We don't have any buffers or anything set up, so what we can do for some testing is just include I IO stream here so we can have access to C out. Process inputs. You can do end line. I'm just going to do this. Let's copy that. Bring it down to update. And draw. And we're going to actually make init return true. So it goes into the loop. Now, we don't have any way to exit this at the moment, which is fine. call this bye bye all right so we're gonna run this but we're gonna have to stop it with the IDE because there is no way to exit it yet so we'll just hit F5 and run let's see how it goes it should build BAM and it dropped out right away if not oh <laughs> we're so funny by we I mean me sorry about that we got to go back into here in the main forgot that we weren't even doing anything and we want to include our game class here in main this is all we're going to need here let's create a game object game 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 dot run there we go all right so if we run it now it should be in our loop 
process, update, draw, bye bye. Don't know why I clicked out so fast. Should have kept going. Oh, again. Again, more mistakes. That's this here. This, this, this needs to be a while. See, so there's going to be lots of mistakes like that as we do this through the course. So this is real programming and uh, kind of what you go through on a daily basis. And now if we run it, it should continue to run. Bam, so it's doing everything we need. If we stop it here, it's just doing that loop constantly, constantly until it gets a command to exit. And once it gets to an exit command, something that turns B running to false, it will exit the loop. We can't do that currently, but we'll get into that next video. All right, so we've made it to the end of the video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And in the next video, we're gonna be creating the console class, which is a nice way to write text into a buffer and present it to the screen. We'll also be able to color the text and define color constants. And we'll also be creating a small logger class. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.